I'm going to switch back to the presentation that I had before. So this morning in this first session before the break, we have scheduled three short presentations. Uh, the first one, I will talk quickly to news inside of Aspect that may be relevant for many people because they are more of an uh, infrastructure um, topic or uh, they, they relate to the infrastructure behind Aspect. And then afterwards, we will have two scientific presentations. Uh, then we'll take a break. Then we will have three more scientific presentations um, and also time for discussions. I want to briefly explain how we do these uh, presentation sessions. So everyone will have a presentation that is uh, around 13 minutes or so, or maybe 15 minutes, somewhere in that range. If you have a brief question about something you didn't understand in the presentation, we may have time to ask that question right after the presentation if we are on schedule. But afterwards, there is a 45-minute block every day to dis in depth discuss the talks of that day. So please, if you have a question that you want to discuss while watching one of the presentations, uh, take note of it somewhere. And we, we have enough time scheduled to discuss all of these questions in the discussion sessions. The two items uh, that I wanted to talk about in, these, in this first Aspect News talk are a new documentation system that have, we have been working on for quite a while in Aspect. And an online executable tool that can be used on geodynamics.org in the near future and that may be irrelevant for some of you. So the first item, uh, Aspect's new documentation system. Aspect, like you probably know, has had a LaTeX PDF manual since its beginning and it's uh, grown a lot. Uh, by now, I think it has more than 500 pages, even more. Um, and lately we have been thinking about, uh, improving that documentation in a few ways that weren't possible in a PDF. For example, it was always somewhat awkward to include links from the PDF to websites or to files in the repository. Uh, and the PDF manual, especially the LaTeX file has grown so large that it has become a bit unwieldy to search in it for anything. So Aspect, as well as some other CIG software projects, have evaluated to switch to an online documentation system um, that is similar to what many other software projects have been doing over the past years. If you want to take a look, the system is already online. Uh, currently, it's at the address aspect-documentation.readthedocs.io. This may or may not be the final address it is being found under. We haven't linked to it from the website as far as I know. Correct me if I'm wrong about that. But um, you can already see what it's going to look like. Um, it's an online documentation. Like I said, it's automatically built from the files that we have in the repository using the documentation builder Sphinx and then hosted on read the docs at the moment. The content should be exactly the same as the one that we had in the PDF manual at the moment. Instead of uh, LaTeX files, it's now stored as markdown text, which is easier to read and write. It looks like a regular text file with some additional commands for things like equations or links to pictures or files. Um, at this point, I want to Give a big shout out to Chris Mills at CAG who took a lot of the work to convert the files um, and to, after the automatic conversion, went through all of the files and uh, looked for things that had to be fixed. Um, so a lot of why this already looks very much finished is thanks to Chris. But you can also find these documentation files not only online, um, you can still find them offline inside of the aspect repository. So just like the old PDF manual, which was always hosted in the file, file in the folder doc slash manual, the new documentation is currently at doc slash Sphinx. 
So if you want to look up something and you don't have internet access, for example, you can either check the source files of the documentation in that folder, or you can also build the documentation locally if you have Sphinx installed and the necessary uh, packages. In that case, you wouldn't need any internet access to see the documentation. I wanted to briefly show you why we think the new documentation is a good idea and what you can do with it. The first benefit of the new documentation is that whenever someone makes changes to aspect, it will be automatically and immediately rebuilt. In other words, there is a tester as part of our tester system that automatically builds the documentation for every change, for every pull request, even before it's merged, and reports back whether the documentation is working. It also allows you to see the documentation of a pull request before it is merged. So we can check before merging any changes if the documentation of the new feature looks reasonable on the website. So how does the documentation look on the website? This is a kind of a cut screenshot of the website. I cut away the, the browser window. Um, the main features that we think are improvements over the traditional PDF manual are there's a search box in the bottom left where you can search for any keyword uh, and find the pages and the documentation that mention it. Uh, you have kind of a table of contents on the left that's very much the same as in many PDF readers, um, but the nice feature here is also that it include it kind of combines the page that contains the documentation and the page that we had maintained so far that contains all of the input parameters for aspects input files. So you can find both the content of the manual and every input parameter in this table of contents. It will be possible to choose the version of the documentation in the future. In other words, uh, you can choose whether you want to see the latest development version or one of the previous releases. We will not be able to convert past releases uh, to this new web page. So for past releases, you would still have to uh, get the PDF manual either from the CIG website or by building it yourself by checking out an old aspect version and build the manual. However, for the future, it will be possible if you're running aspect 2.5, say, and uh, it, the development has already moved on, you will be able to choose aspect 2.5 down there to actually have the documentation of the aspect version you're running. In the top right, there are direct links to the aspect repository. Um, there is an option to open an issue, and there's an option to suggest an edit for any page of the documentation. So in other words, if you're browsing the documentation and you see a typo and you or you see something that's not explained very well, then please let us know about it. Either open an issue or even better suggest an edit to the page that makes it, uh, that improves the documentation. This is much easier to make a change than for you to go into your local version of aspect, go into the LaTeX file, make a change there, figure out how to make a pull request to the online repository. This should be a uh, one click and a uh, fully uh, in graphical user interface to make changes to the documentation. I have to quickly note here that this is currently not working for the sections of the documentation that contain cookbooks and benchmarks. This is due to the internal setup of the documentation. We may find a solution for that or we may not, but um, don't be disappointed if it doesn't work if you're currently in a cookbook or benchmark section it does work in every other section of the documentation and finally one of the advantages is that we now can not only link to other parts of the documentation in the documentation but we can also links to link to files in the repository so in some places you will find links that point you exactly to the file in the repository that you should look at uh, which makes it easy to find what we are talking about in the documentation. Likely, we will replace the LaTeX documentation sometime this year with this new website. And since we are functionally done with converting the documentation, that may actually happen pretty soon. Uh, we will do some final testing 
Um, if any problems are found, then it may happen later, but it will probably happen sometime this year. And that means from the next aspect release on, uh, we will likely start to remove the old LaTeX files and the PDF manual. When that happens, don't be surprised. There is now the new website to look up the documentation. Are there any questions at this point that we should discuss about the documentation system? We have a bit of time because we were a bit faster than expected. I have a question. Yes. So in the current documentation system, uh, the PDF one, uh, like if you have some parameter files or like if you write some codes, with uh, parameters, they are automatically put into the documentation. But uh, will that be still maintained with this current one? This this new 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 documentation? Yes. Um, let me just clarify. What you are talking about is that we keep parts of, for example, the cookbooks parameter file as a separate file that then gets included in the documentation. Like a like a little text snippet, actually like like this part here. Is that what you were thinking about? No, no. It is like really like in the CC files, like when you when you list your parameter files, like a like a parameter files, and you give some some uh, default values. I I I thought like they were like a already automatically put into the pdf when you run the documentation oh i see what you're talking you're talking about the input parameters for the parameter file yes so that will that will still happen um the instead of converting all of the input parameters into a latex document that is then included in the final pdf so as an appendix to the manual uh, you will see the all the input parameters in the table of contents here on the left. Uh, let me illustrate how that will look like. Um, soon as I can figure out. So this is the website as it is right now. And here on the left, the first part of the table of content will be the user guide. The second part will be the parameter documentation. And here you can find all of the parameters sorted by subsection of the input file. And it will contain, as, as in the manual at the moment, it will contain the parameter name, uh, the default value, what kind, what kind of values are accepted and the documentation for each parameter. Thank you. Cool. Cool. Okay. Okay, then the second new item that I briefly wanted to talk about in this first talk is a new feature that will be available on the CIG website, geodynamics.org soon, or partly is already available. So you may have noticed that CIG has a new website. Geodynamics.org looks different than it looked in the past. And one of the major new features of the new website is to be able to not only download software, but launch software. It's The feature is hidden at the moment because we are still building tools for it, but it's already available if you go to software download and then switch the type of software here from software download to software launch. This will show you a short list of different tools that are already available. And uh, one that's already publicly available, for example, is the tool for the software Burnman. If you click on that, you will see a button that allows you to launch that tool. And what that does is um, it opens the tool on a virtual machine or on inside of a Docker container on the UC San Diego supercomputing center. Um, before I launch into the exact features of this, um, there are a few notes to make. 
this is, as I said, currently in, in beta, we are still adding new tools. And one thing, one reason I bring this up right now is that we're also actively working on an aspect tool. And we would like to ask users what would be most useful to include for such an aspect tool. Um, in order to use this at the moment, you require we require everyone to have an account on that website. You can make one for free and it's you can even use your ORCID ID, I think, to create an account. Um, it's executed on shared hardware on the Hub Zero project of, of the UC San Diego. That means uh, if too many people access too many resources at the same time, it will slow down. This is not intended to run high performance computations. It's mostly intended uh, either to try out software at very small test models or for educational purposes. However, we already want to ask for feedback and we are going to extend this over the next year. So feel free to contact us and let us know if you have any problems or if you want to contribute something. So how does this look like in practice? One option is to start a Jupyter Hub on this system and to run Jupyter Notebooks there. This is what the Burnman tutorial does that's currently available. Uh, it will open up, uh, so it will spin up a Jupyter server. You can run a Jupyter Notebook there. It will have Burnman pre-installed or whatever CRG software this tool was written for. Uh, you can have multiple notebooks available and you can interactively like you would expect from a Jupyter Notebook, uh, use the tool. So for example, you can run Burnman to compute some mineral physics properties or create some plots. Like I mentioned, we're also working on an aspect note no notebook at the moment, and it is in a workable state. It's not published yet because we want to, we are still thinking about what exactly to include in that notebook. But one option that is already available and that works is to download an aspect parameter file and to run it inside of that, uh, that notebook. In this case, I also set up a Jupyter notebook. Uh, you get the output and then you can post-process the output using Python. So you can, for example, read the statistics file plot some of the properties over time or over whatever other uh, variable you want to plot them. Like I said, at the moment, this is still in development and this is the current state. So one of the discussions that I would like to have at in one of the later sessions at this meeting is what kind of features do we need in this tool? Is it enough to just have aspect executable? And then everyone could upload their own parameter files and um, do their little test models. Do we need to have all of the current cookbooks available before this is becoming useful? Or is it enough to just have a bare bones aspect installation? Do we need fully developed Jupyter notebooks or is it just enough to have aspect installed? These are the kind of questions that I would like to discuss at some point during the meeting. For now, I just wanted to make you aware of the possibilities and look forward to hear your opinions later. We have two minutes or so before we move on to the next talk. So if you have any questions or comments right now, I'm happy to hear anything, or we will have a late, longer discussion later. I have a quick question, which is, you said that it's not linked from the main webpage, um, talking about the documentation. Yes. Is there a reason? I, I mean, I can find it, but it's kind of a headache. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so the reason it's not linked right now is that the conversion was just finished a few weeks ago, and we just haven't updated the web page yet. I already opened a pull request. <laughs> okay. So apparently it's being worked on right now. You may find it soon. <laughs> 